Hello children and welcome to my class. Today's lesson is an excerpt from science fiction. It includes not only human and animal characters but also extraterrestrial beings. They are the Martians, the aliens who are strange and unpredictable. So let us begin with running away and extract from War of the Worlds by H. G. Wells. Herbert George Wells or H. G. Wells was an English writer best known for his work in science fiction. He is sometimes called the father of science fiction and shares this title with another famous author Jules Verne. His most notable science fiction works include The War of the Worlds, The Time Machine and The Island of Dr. Morio. When two creatures from Mars arrive on Earth, most people believe that they are harmless and have only come to visit our planet. But when a few people try to communicate with them, the Martians flash a green light and silently kill them all. The narrator, who was also present there, is only saved because he is at a distance and escapes unnoticed. Terrified, he hurries to take his family to safety in another village. He himself, however, decides to return as he is confident that the Martians will be easily defeated by the army. It was nearly 11 when I set out to drive my cart to Maybury. The night was very dark and hot, but I wanted to know how the battle between us and the Martians would end. The story is in the first person narrative and the author says that when Martians came on earth, most people believed that they had come only to visit our planet. But the Martians flash a green light, burning trees and killing people. He takes his family to a safe place and returns to see what is happening to his neighborhood. Besides, he was confident that the Martians would easily be defeated by the army. It was quite late when the narrator started his journey to Maybury. So, I drove steadily as the blood-red glow on the horizon grew more prominent and mixed with the black clouds in the sky. What is this? I thought. What is going on? Just then, a bright green light lit up the road around me and showed the woods ahead. A line of green fire passed through the clouds in the sky and into the field to my left. It was the third Martian. As the narrator drove the cart, he was thinking about the blood red glow on the horizon that he could easily see. Just then, a bright green light lit up the road around him. It was a line of green fire that passed through the clouds in the sky. It was the third Martian. Before I had time to think anymore, rain, thunder and lightning burst upon us. My terrified horse raced down the hill as I noticed that something was moving down quickly in the opposite direction. At first, I thought it was the wet roof of a house. Then, by a lightning flash, I saw the thing clear and bright. How do I describe it? It was an enormous tripod higher than houses stepping over the young trees and smashing them. It was a walking machine. I watched in shock as another enormous tripod appeared from the woods, bending the trees to clear its way. It was rushing straight towards me. Then I panicked. The narrator was in shock on seeing the third Martian. Rain, thunder and lightning made the horse terrified and it ran down the hill. In the lightning flash, the narrator saw a huge three-legged structure, a tripod, stepping over the trees and smashing them. Already in shock, he saw another enormous tripod appearing from the woods, bending the trees to clear its way. 
the narrator suddenly felt great fear as it was heading straight towards him. Without stopping to look again, I desperately pulled my horse's head to the right. But my cart toppled over on its side and I fell into a shallow pool of water. I crawled out almost immediately and hid under a bush. My horse had run away and by the lightning flashes, I could see the upturned cart and a single wheel still spinning. When the narrator saw another walking machine coming towards him, he pulled his horse's head suddenly and his cart toppled over. He fell into a pool. As he came out of the pool and hid in a bush, he saw his cart upturned. The enormous machine was walking slowly and going uphill. It had not noticed me. As it passed, it howled louder than the thunder. Alu, alu, and joined its companion half a kilometer away. I then realized the great danger I was in. I ran towards the woods. I stumbled through the trees and darkness as I walked up the hillside. Near the top, I fell over something soft. A flash of lightning showed me that it was what remained of our neighborhood shop. It was completely burned. The walking machine did not notice him and walked uphill. As it passed, it howled louder than thunder and joined its companion. Now that the two machines were together, the narrator realized the danger he was in. He ran uphill towards the woods, stumbling in darkness. He fell over something soft and saw that it was the remains of his neighborhood shop that was completely burnt. Nervously, I moved on up the hill and entered my house trembling violently. I had heard voices from the Mayberry Bridge but I was too frightened and tired to shout or to join them. So I went upstairs to my study and looked out through my window. The thunderstorm had passed. The towers of the Oriental College and the trees around it had gone. On seeing the remains of the shop, the narrator was nervous. He entered his house shaking with fear. He could hear voices from under the Mayberry Bridge, but he was too tired and frightened to join those people. Upstairs, from the window of his study, he looked out. As the storm had passed, he could see the towers of Oriental College and the trees around it. Very far away, lit by red fire, the common was visible. The whole countryside was ablaze. Even when I peered into the red smoke, I could not see any people at all. This fiery chaos had once been my little world and I had lived in it safe and happy for years before the Martians arrived. What are they? I wondered. Are they intelligent machines? I felt this was impossible. Or does a Martian sit inside each tripod, controlling it like a robot? From his window, the narrator could see the countryside still burning and there were no people anywhere. This entire countryside burning strongly had once been his entire world where he had been safe and happy for years before the Martians arrived. He stood thinking whether the walking machines created the havoc or a Martian sat inside each machine directing it to destroy. Suddenly, I heard a slight noise and leaned out of the window. A soldier was climbing down my garden fence. Are you trying to hide? I whispered. I am. Come into the house, I said. I went down, opened the door and let him in. What happened? I asked. We didn't have a chance, he said, trembling. Not a chance. 
As the narrator stood thinking, he heard a slight noise and leaned out of his window. He saw a soldier climbing down the garden fence. He was shaking with fear. He said that they did not have a chance. The soldier was a part of the army sent to talk to the Martians, but the Martians had flashed the green light and killed everyone. Then they walked away. The soldier had lain still till the tripods left. Then he got up and ran. By the time the soldier finished telling his story, it was morning. From my window, we could see the three tripods shining in the morning light as they stood on the common, examining the damage they had done. The soldier told the narrator that he was part of the army sent to talk to the Martians, but they flashed the green lights and killed everyone. The soldier said he could be saved because he lay still till the tripods left. Then he got up and ran for life. From his window, the narrator could see the tripods standing on the playground examining the damage that they had done. Children, the excerpt ends here. At the end of this excerpt, we are told that the narrator and the soldier realized that it was very unsafe to stay in the house. So, they packed as much food and water as they could find in the house and set off for London. Children, the situation in this excerpt instills fear not only for the present but also for the future. It is indeed sad to see an entire civilization that someone takes for granted crumbling before their eyes. Things like family life, social and military security that we take for granted be destroyed completely and forever. Let us wind up this chapter wishing love, peace and joy for ourselves and for everyone around us. If you have any queries related to the chapter, please feel free to ask me. Thank you. Bye-bye.